so we've done a lot. We've covered a lot of South Park. We've always covered Try Not To Laugh. We've did some, we, we've did some, some things in the psychological nature of why people do things, but we never spent a video on it. You know, we never taken the time to go do a deep dive into South Park. We're doing a deep dive into Cartman and Heidi. Heidi is Cartman's girlfriend. Quite frankly, the most, like, I don't even know what to say. I never thought Cartman would get a girl, and the fact that they did, and it's hilarious. I'm talking about hilarious. So now we're gonna check out, it says the, psych, the psychology of a toxic relationship, all right? So hit that like button, go down below, subscribe to your boy, let's get started. As you may remember from my previous psychology video, Cartman is a pretty horrible person, just in general. That's right. no matter how bad I felt for him after seeing his future at the end of the Return of COVID special, I will still acknowledge that someone of his character, at least in this timeline, will would undoubtedly be one of the most evil people to ever exist regardless of age. Because of these traits, you would imagine someone like this would find it pretty hard to have anyone even find them likable, let alone want to start a relationship with them. That's facts. Like, that, remember I just said, I never thought Cartman would get a girlfriend, period. But when someone like this can catch the right person at the right time when they're more vulnerable than ever before, the outcome can be devastating. And with Cartman and Heidi, we got to see the outcome of this perfect storm of events unfold on our television screens in a way that is rarely seen in other forms of media. And as horrible as this relationship was, it's an important look into how these types- Hey, fuck him, he talking about Tolkien's life matters on his t-shirt, fuck him. <laughs> ...situations can come about, and a cautionary tale to those who may find themselves in a similar situation. And, and and FYI, FYI, for everybody that was not every not all not everybody watching, I'm talking about for everybody that was telling me Token's name is actually spelled. I'm like, no, they spell Token T O K E N, Token. That's the whole joke. The whole joke is he's the Token black guy. That's that's. So when I spelled it T O K E N and put it on the um and put it and put it on the thumbnail. That's why. If you'll once again think back to that video, I came up with an unofficial diagnosis for Cartman in terms of what causes him to behave the way he does, and in my unqualified opinion, Cartman fell into the category of a narcissist. Right. And because of this, as we progress through the different stages of their relationship, I will be referencing this list I found on the website Healthline that goes into 11 signs that the person you're dating is a narcissist. I'll be using it to compare the actions we see from Cartman throughout the relationship, and I'm sure there will be no issue with that, as I'm sure this article was written by an actual psychologist. Okay, that was supposed it's to- It's a safe bet, but we don't know. But it's it's good rule of thumb. It's to be a joke, but upon further research, I realized this article was actually verified by an actual doctor of psychology. Good, good. So, never mind. I guess we can take everything this article says as gospel. Okay. Even from the moment they started dating, Cartman and Heidi's relationship was built on shaky ground. Heidi decides to quit Twitter and any other form of social media by throwing her phone off a bridge. Cartman has all of his devices destroyed by the other boys after they accuse him of being the notorious internet troll skank hunt 42. <laughs> Damn. Because of these circumstances, Heidi talks to Eric, as she can understand what he's going through. She feels bad for him, and their writers make it clear that that's a big factor in forming their future. Mm. They form a friendship over their lack of connection to the internet and eventually even begin to date. And this is where we get to the first sign of dating a narcissist, being initially charming. Obviously uh, being charming isn't enough to call someone a narcissist, but with the context of how this relationship plays out, this is clearly an early sign of what's to come. From the moment Heidi talked to Cartman for the first time, he was saying everything she wanted to hear, repeating over and over again how she's so smart and funny, specifically funny because as he is quick to remind everyone countless times throughout season 20, Girls rule, women are funny, get over it. Now, to the untrained eye, this may seem genuine, as he's in love for the first time and is experiencing all the emotions that come with it. Yeah, because, like, when Carmen say things, you got to take it with a grain of salt, bro, because at the same time, like, you know, Carmen is a master manipulator. Like, he will manipulate the fuck out of anybody and anything to get what he wants. He once manipulated a demon king. What was his name? Matutu? Some... Anyways... He manipulated a demon king into destroying a town and, and, and the world, and the world. But we're talking about Eric Cartman here. Every little compliment and repeated mantra of smart and funny is calculated. Building Heidi up by telling her how awesome she is, making her believe that she's special to him. All of this building up is done with the foresight of how it can be used against her later, and we'll get to that. 
Mm. But in the second half of season 20, we begin to see the first cracks in the facade Cartman is putting on. When he finds out Denmark plans on releasing the internet history of the entire world, he panics because of some emails he sent to Butters about women not being funny. Uh. Knowing that Cartman has been lying to Heidi about women being funny gives us our first taste of a trait that will get much worse later on, and that is manipulation and gaslighting. Mm. This shows that from the beginning, Cartman has been using the women are funny line to manipulate Heidi into liking him more. Wow. But as I mentioned, this is only the beginning. Throughout the rest of season 20, he begins to believe that all women are the same and that they plan to make men irrelevant. Because of this, Cartman is a bit more hesitant around Heidi for the remainder of the season, but there's nothing outstanding that happens that would show that he's not interested in her anymore. The opening of season 21, however, is when we get to see his true intentions come out. Oh, hey babe, what's going on? <laughs> That's hilarious, bro. I never gonna lie. That is hilarious when he just when he just like gets around when a girl gets around you just like. But I don't know, man. That to me, that just seems like typical relationship shit. Like you know, like it's like you know you might love your your girl or even even a girl might love her dude, but then sometimes they just annoy you. Be like. Ah. I'm trying to do something. I know you're trying to want to talk. I know you want to do this, do that. I just don't want to do it right now. But it just seems like he hasn't explained his feelings. I mean, that's what I thought. I thought that he just hadn't explained his feelings to her because he's scared of talking to her because he might lose her, quote, quote, by telling her how he really feels. But that could be a narcissist, you know? I hope I'm not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying, but like... That could be like, so you never, you never really know, but that's what I initially thought. Starting off the new season, we see a drastic shift in Cartman's behavior around Heidi. While previously he was excited to see Heidi, now he seems completely deflated and exhausted at the thought of her even existing. Oh, yeah. And I've seen a lot of people question what exactly caused this change. Why did Cartman all of a sudden become so unhappy in his relationship when this was him before? Well, the answer is actually pretty obvious when you take into account what a narcissist would be looking for in a romantic relationship. Mm. That is, control. Because a narcissist only considers their own needs, they'd be more drawn to people that are easier to control, to do exactly what they want when they want. And from the very first scene of this season, we see Cartman has gotten exactly that in a new form. Cartman now has an Alexa, and it gives him everything he wants from a relationship with Heidi, a personal <laughs> servant that listens to his every command without question and is smart and funny. Oh my god. I mean, this basically renders Heidi completely useless in his mind. Also, they basically spell it out for us in this clip. You're so... Alexa, define subservient. The term <laughs> subservient has several uses as an adjective. One, compliant and obedient to authority. Two, Alexa, silence! <laughs> this dude is sick. He's sick. He is sick. So then if Cartman basically has everything he wants in the form of a talking AI, why does he keep Heidi around? Well, because he still enjoys that feeling of control I mentioned earlier, but more importantly, staying with Heidi strokes his ego. Narcissists thrive off of putting others down to boost their own ego, and he knows that if he keeps Heidi around, he can do this to her all he wants. And the mental abuse just gets worse from here, as later in this episode, we see another sign of his narcissistic side come out, the gaslighting. He begins to call Heidi mentally abusive, accusing her of basically everything he himself is doing, wow. like building her up to tear her down. This gaslighting is strategic, making himself out to be the victim in a situation where he is clearly the problem. If uh. he can make Heidi believe that he's the victim, then it shifts the blame away from himself and the cycle can continue. Why? Unfortunately for Heidi, it does work, and she apologizes for everything, even though she's done nothing wrong. Cartman actually ends up breaking up with her, once again gaslighting Heidi by claiming she's playing the victim. This is all just another power move, as he clearly intends on getting back with her. He's just doing it to further incept the idea that she's abusive into her mind. That's fucked up, man. Like, it's like, it's one thing that, like... Like, he knows, like, hey, look, I am going to do this to just mess with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's it's, there's something that, like, okay, let's say if somebody breaks up with you, and then you're like, all right, I want to get in the gym. I want to do all these things with my life because I'm going to show this person that they messed up when they did that. That's just being a little bit resentful. That's being a little, maybe a little spiteful. But that's not narcissism. But what's crazy is... The fact that he is like, all right, look, I'm going to break up with her 
after making her feel bad, just so that way I'm gonna get back with her and I can, can gain more control over it. That is crazy, that's messed up, man. His mental manipulation of Heidi worsens in the next episode, when it's revealed that he begged Heidi to take him back, threatening to end his own life if she doesn't. Wow. This is a pretty classic manipulative behavior, common in toxic relationships, as it puts the person getting manipulated into an unwinnable situation if they believe the other person might actually do it. Wow. And of course, this is another sign of a narcissist, panic when being broken up with. There are countless more examples of Cartman's manipulative behavior, such as accusing Heidi of cheating, pretending to be a suicide activist to stroke his own ego, and <laughs> literally trying to murder Heidi by taking her on a walk through the woods dressed as Hansel and Gretel when they know there's a witch on the loose. <laughs> okay, that one's pretty funny just because of how absurd it is. But... Yeah, that shit is hilarious, bro. I can't even lie. But anyways, if I listed everything in this video, it would be 30 minutes long, so. But why did she get fat, though? It almost is like Heidi turned into Cartman, and she started manipulating him. I don't know, but I, I, from what I saw, I'm like, damn, Heidi is turning into this man. Look at her. She's big, plump, look like a fat-ass marshmallow with a jacket on and shit like that. She got spots, liver spots, poking up out of nowhere and shit. I know that they look like the mountains in the background. Goddamn, boy, get your teeth. Your teeth looks like, uh. Uh, two stacked white bricks next to each other. I don't get it. Are you trying to build a house in your mouth? I'm just trying to understand. So let's go ahead and move on to the outcome of all this abuse. Oh, hey, babe, what's going on? <laughs> so I've been talking this whole time about how Cartman has been mentally abusive towards Heidi, but I haven't really talked much about the actual effects the abuse has had on her. Episode 7 of Season 21 opens with Cartman once again threatening to end his own life if Heidi doesn't get back with him. He tries to blame his actions on everything besides himself, eventually saying his anger is caused by his blood sugar since he eats so unhealthily. Heidi propositions a vegan diet, and he agrees to it to keep their relationship. He begins to feed her non-vegan food, lying to her telling her it is vegan. She begins to gain some weight, and Cartman is constantly ridiculing her for this, once again putting her down to make himself feel better. Right. We get our first real look into Heidi's feelings about the relationship when Kyle gets involved and tries to explain to her that people like Cartman will always victimize themselves to have the edge over others. She explains how she was in a vulnerable place when they started dating, and she kind of just went along with it. Now she's been defending him for so long that she can't imagine facing anyone if she actually broke up with him. Man, that's messed up. But you know what? You got to do what's best for you, man. And I know that sounds fucked up, but in life, bro, people have their own agenda. You got to do what's best for you. You know, it's good to, like, love somebody and want to, like, be close and be with somebody, bro. But at the end of the day, if in life, people care about one thing. If you're sane, you care about one thing. You care about your survival and you care about prospering yourself. Now, obviously, we got children. You got people you take care of you got a lot of things that are in the way of that you're not just going to just strictly care about yourself but in order for like like for me example in order for me to get aj where i need aj to be or where aj should be i need to work on myself so i have to be a little selfish i have to focus on myself work on myself and gain the knowledge and abilities to make sure that he knows exactly what he should do and he has a, a fair opportunity in life now with her and uh and eric but you got to understand that at the end of the day she has to break up with her because it's it's to her own uh, benefit not detriment like her being with him is detrimental to her physical mental health her reputation like how she started treating her friends just being around and absorbing all that energy and like you literally see her change from you know this this pretty little little girl that you know i you know we didn't even really know to being somebody like damn she's a total bitch now you know what i'm saying and that's because of Carmen's manipulative behavior, but that's because she decided to stay. This type of mindset is very common in not only toxic relationships, but abusive ones. As the victims have experienced so much abuse and manipulation, they feel trapped in their situation with no way out. Kyle actually talks her into breaking up with Cartman, but when she's ridiculed by her friends for ever being with Cartman, she gets defensive and returns to him. It's just like the title of the episode, she's doubling down. She doesn't want to feel like an idiot for being in the relationship, and when her friends make her feel like one, she wants to prove them wrong. Right. At this point, 
Being trapped in a relationship with a narcissist, Heidi has two options in her mind. A, she can continue on in this relationship as it is now, horribly emotional since Cartman is always trying to make her think she's a bad person, or B, stoop to his level and use his own tactics against him, play the victim even harder than him. Mm. She chooses the second option, and this leads her to becoming a near clone of Cartman. Damn. She's built like him, she talks like him, is a jerk to everyone like him, and manipulates people like him. She's even better at being Cartman than Cartman is, because as Mr. Mackey puts it, She's kind of like Cartman, but with the ability to follow through. Damn. Oh, dude. Bro. Bro exactly. <laughs> She's truly become a terrifying force to be reckoned with. It even escalates from mental abuse to physical abuse, as now they're fighting in the hallways of school. She's truly outdone Cartman in her ability to play the victim, a feat which is equally as impressive as it is terrible. This all comes to a head in the final episode of season 21. Throughout the episode, they pass by significant locations throughout Cartman and Heidi's relationship, and she slowly begins to put the pieces together. By the end of the episode, she finally realizes what she's become. She realizes what oh, Cartman has turned into. On. And while she can recognize Cartman's part into making her into the person she is today, she also blames herself. She understands that she let the idea of being a victim overtake her life and become who she is. She realizes Cartman's train of thought. If you're always the victim, you can justify being a horrible person. She understands that the only way out now is to stop feeling sorry for herself and move on. She breaks up with Cartman on the spot. He tries his tactics of threatening his own life, but she doesn't buy into it anymore. She allows mm. Cartman to play the victim for the last time, telling him she's done doing the same, and she walks away, ending it for good. If you always make yourself the victim, you can justify being awful. Mm. That's um that's a powerful statement for life. Don't make yourself the victim, bro. That's this is I love I'm loving this. This is South Park, bro. This is crazy. This is South Park. Do not play the victim. Don't be the victim. Man, that's crazy. You know, I, I'm going to take some of these statements and apply it to my life, bro, because I don't want to be the victim and I, you know, I don't want to stay with somebody who, who's a narcissist either. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that. I don't want to be one. I don't want, I don't want to be with one. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's quite interesting, man. This is, this is really insightful, bro. Really is, bro. I ain't even gonna lie to you. While Cartman has done countless horrible things over the years, something about his treatment of Heidi will always stick with me as particularly evil. The way he took a girl who was so kind and caring and tore her down over and over again until she was an unrecognizable shell of her former self just hurts my soul. And I think it's because of how well they portrayed the psychology of a relationship with a narcissist. Most of Cartman's horrible actions are played for laughs or shock value, and they don't have the same impact because there's always a degree of separation from reality that makes it feel just absurd enough to laugh at. But with this relationship, at times, it felt too real. Like, I was really watching the slow breakdown of a girl's mind at the hands of a narcissist. Right. It makes you think about all the people experiencing the same thing out there in the real world who may never come to the realizations Heidi did. Right. If you're out there right now experiencing something like this, don't be afraid to get help and move on. It's like the writers are saying in the message behind this relationship. You can't fix people like this, so don't try. And now, hopefully, wow. we all have a better understanding of the psychology of a toxic relationship. I really like that. Hold on, bro. That was interesting. I know this video is going on 20 minutes, but that was interesting. That was very good. I have to shout out who, who is in, um, Bloom. If y'all like that video, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Go down below. If you got somebody in your life right now that is being a narcissist or acting like any of that, or if you feel like that for yourself, then try to do your best to change. Just be a person of change. Realize that that's, that's not the way to go, and you don't have to stick with that. Deal with that, all right? I love y'all. Be safe. Peace.